Welcome to the um, second video in the series. This is a video about turning the barrel of a bespoke pen. So today I'm going to use this piece of dime cast, which we cut up in the previous video, to turn this into that. So there's several parts and requirements of what we need to accomplish with this. Um, first of all is the hole. So we need to drill through. The hole needs to be big enough to accommodate a converter and or a cartridge to fit inside it. Um, second of all we need some internal threads which you can see in there so that will be to accommodate the nib section to screw in. Third of all we will need some external threads as seen just here that will be for the cap to attach onto and then last of all after that we'll need to turn it to shape and sand and polish it. So um, we'll head on over to the lathe and we'll get started on that. Okay. So first things first is we need to put our collet chuck onto the lathe and attach our material in that. So the diameter of the diamond cast is about 18 millimeters or a bit over. So we use the 18 to 19 millimeter uh, collet. So basically, pop that on there. It's always hard to get it started. And we need to make sure that we have the right end facing out. So I've got the mark, put it in and tighten it up. don't need to over tighten, just sort of enough for a single thing. And then you'll see that it'll run quite straight here, but we can tell here straight away that the um, end isn't very flush. So the very first thing we need to do is uh, square up the end. So you can do that with your parting tool if you like. Um, I personally prefer to use a carbide barrel trimmer Let's tighten that up so in terms of speeds um, I do anything with drilling or anything like this at about 175 um, my lathe goes down quite slow so I can do it quite slow and I prefer to have a bit more control over it by going slow like that but I know a lot of people will drill and everything much faster than that so I just need to Give it a quick tap. Doesn't much, won't do the center bit, but that's okay. We're going to drill through there. So now we can see that's nice and square. So the next step is to use one of our center bits. Um, so I use one of the smaller ones and we'll start a hole. This way we can ensure or better chance that we'll get a nice straight even hole. So you don't need to go in far, just enough to sort of get to the 60 degree section. And so we've got a nice starting hole there. So now we next we need to drill our hole for our threads. So we're using an M10 by 0.75. So it means we need a hole that is around about 9.1 to 9.2, 2.25 uh, millimeters. So I use a 2364, which is about a nine millimeter bit but it actually translates um, by the time it does it to a whole bit over nine millimeters. Um, so we only need to go in as much um, to cut the thread. So we'll go in about 10 millimeters or so with this drill bit. For drilling lubrication, I use trusty old WD-40. Um, I get the lower order one, works just as well as the regular one, just makes it easy to clean up later to get rid of the smell inside the, the pen. Uh, put a just cloth down to protect my bed lathe. So it just needs a tiny bit, just apply it. Always make sure you start drill quite slowly, especially when you've already got the hole there can sort of go in quite aggressively sometimes if you're too aggressive and chip it out. 
Um, so as long as we're still getting the nice ribbons like this, that's what we're looking for. So we want to go in about 10, 12 millimeters. Doesn't matter too, if you go too much further, um, as long as we've got enough to cut our threads. So we'll just go a tiny bit more. Always reapply. Right, that heaps. So next I switch to an 8.25 millimeter bit. The uh, reason I use this bit is that it matches the diameter of my mandrel. Um, it will also um, be big enough that the um, converter will be able to fit in. Um, matches that about its biggest dimension. Um, so now we need to drill um, so down to this mark, which I have pre-marked, so that's about 78 millimeters. Um, so that's enough for the converter to sort of be able to sit in. Uh, most cartridges are much shorter than that, so um, as long as you have the right depth for the um, the converter, you should be good. So I like to take the drilling nice and slow. I want to get like nice clean cuts. If you go too fast and create too much heat, you'll start losing these nice sort of ribbons and you'll get lots of uh, dust coming out instead which means it's not really cutting as cleanly um, so I back out to make sure I clear the shavings and everything out and back in and so we'll just do that four or five times until we get down to the end get nice colorful uh, draw shavings from the diamond cast Diamondcast is a Lumite resin, which is um, ideal for working with the kitless pens. Uh, it's nice and strong, durable, polishes up well, um, but also takes the threads very well. Very easy to work with. Um, it's not quite as hard as some of the um, other epoxies and things like that, uh, which means it's not quite as brittle. Um, so it means it cuts the threads easier than epoxy and the PR resins. Um, but by, by no means too difficult to, to do that. Takes a bit of time to, to get this done, but you don't want to rush it. Last thing you want to do is explode out a piece of material because we're rushing the drilling. You don't want to have too many shavings in there because that'll expand the um, size of the hole a bit as it sort of gets there. Almost done. Okay, so up to the line. Doesn't matter if we go a little bit over. And there we go. Last thing I'll drill is with a approximate 10 millimeter bit. I'll just drill in just one or two millimeters, just a tiny amount. This is to create a little recess for when the um, nib section sits in and just helps helps out things a bit later. Really only need to go in a tiny bit. I probably won't be able to pick that up on the camera. But it's just gone in and uh, maybe a millimeter or so. And then we're done for the drilling. Um, so if you touch the piece, you'll feel that it's actually quite hot. Um, you'll want to avoid cutting threads on anything when it's hot because the material expands and shrinks slightly depending on the heat. So you'll want it at room temperature um, when you're cutting threads. So while ideally it would be best to cut the threads now um, before we move on to the next step, it's a bit too hot. So in terms of to save time, what I'll do is we'll do the um, tenon next.
Okay, so we're all ready to turn the tenon for the external threads now. So always use your live center for support. Um, so I'll be turning with my uh, three millimeter, four millimeter uh, parting tool. Um, so basically I need to have a tenon to make this sort of section here. So it needs to be about five and a half millimeters or so. Uh, it's not too critical how exact you are with that, um, but obviously you don't wanna to go too big or too short. Uh, but I found five to five and a half millimeters wide is the um, best. Um, in terms of diameter, it needs to be quite exact. Um, so we're looking at for our threads um, for the M13 by 0.8. Um, so theory, you'd have it at 13 millimeters exactly. Uh, but in practice, you actually, um, I go a little bit under that. So I'll try and hit about 12.75. Um, on the edge bits here and about 12.6869 um, for the very sort of end part. Um, blade speed, I run about two and a half thousand. So I'll start by getting the width, width right. So estimate that. Stop and measure. So it's about 4.9, so just go a tiny bit more. And then we'll go down to so I'd normally run the extractor for this. It's the mess out of the way. So it's about 15. And that was about 6. So that's about 14, down there now, getting close up. So 13.8, so if you creep up on your Final dimension, last thing we'll do is go over. Just want to try and keep the cuts as clean as possible. Tool quick sharpen just to finish it, just so I get a nice clean cut. Okay, nice and close. So uh, it's about 12.9 through to 13.2. Just about there. 
So I've got the very tip of it to the right, right dimension, and now I just need to even it up. So about 12.75 exactly there. A little bit less down at the shoulder, which is fine. And 12.7 there. Perfect. So what I'll do next is polish this surface here as well as that surface there. Um, it's not really important to get it too shiny. Um, but I'll give it a quick go with micro mesh. Um, you'll be cutting threads through there anyway, but it'll just help it make it look a little bit nicer there later. Um, so now I'll just quickly give it a quick polish. My micro mesh. I don't spend a lot of time on this, as you'll be cutting cutting through it with threads anyway. I'll just quickly run through my pads. I buy the off-brand micro mesh. This is literally the only thing I use it for. So I use polishing paste for everywhere else. I also give the shoulder here a quick touch. Probably won't be able to see it when the final finished product, but I do it anyway. Okay, and that's it for that. So it gives it just a better sort of surface to be cutting the threads on, uh, which will make it look a little bit better later. So only two things we need to do now is cut the external and internal threads. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. We'll do the internal ones first. So I've got my M10 by 0.75 tap. So I'll use the bottoming section sort of tap on this because the knife's quite soft, so I don't really need help starting it. So my method is I securely put it in my Jacobs chuck, and then I just have my Jacobs chuck sitting loosely, but as close in as I can to keep it aligned in my tailstock. Um, you can buy fancy tools to hold taps or do it in your sliding thing, um, but this is the quickest and easiest method that I've found. Bring it up there like that. Um, so always use a cutting fluid. So like I said, I use WD-40. So put that on there like that. Advance this up so it's held loosely but straight. And then I use my other hand on the flywheel to turn the thing towards me. And then I'll use my other hand to turn the Jacob's chuck away from me and do it backwards and forwards to cut the threads. You can sort of feel them cutting. Important thing is you don't want to be pushing in that way with this hand. Um, you sort of just want to be feeding it, turning it, and it'll sort of self-feed in. And you'll see these little uh, ribbons and curls sort of start to come out from the threads. 
So depending on how hard or soft the material is, depends on how easy this step is. Uh, Aluminite is a dime cast is very it's quite soft. So it comes out quite easy. So you can sort of see I've already cut all that sort of thread material off. So it's good to sort of clear out the bits. I use a little brush to clear out the material. A bit more WD-40 and then we're going again. So I want to make sure we go in enough for the threads for the nib section, which is generally about five and a half, six millimeters, plus also enough for the threads on your mandrel, which again is usually only five, six millimeters. But a little bit extra over that certainly doesn't hurt. Sort of has a quite a satisfying cut, diamond cast, when you're cutting your threads. You sort of feel as it gets to a bit stiffer, means you need to clear out the material. Um, I do the backwards and forwards motion because that sort of clears out the material a bit and moves it into the, the channels of the, the tap. So now we've got probably quite a lot of threads, more than we don't need in there. So it's always good to test it with another nib section that you have. Just make sure it goes in nicely. That, and you want to sort of see it when you spin it that it sort of stays completely flat and even it means you've got a nice sort of even sort of flat surface there if we hadn't squared that up up at the very start this is when we would have problems here and the other thing that we want to check is that our mandrel will fit in so we want to put it in later so again that twists in quite nicely it's trying to be a wobble in there but that's okay so that does quite nicely so now we just need to move on to the external ones. So for that we'll use our sliding tap and die holder. It goes in firmly. Our M13.8 goes in. You always put the writing facing outwards. So it's got two grub screws that you attach with. So you have to be careful you don't over tighten it because it'll actually clamp the threads together make it cut more aggressively. So there's a bit of a trial and error to work out how tight you need to have that for your material. Uh, so we'll line that up. So if you haven't got this diameter right, if it's too big, when you first start to do this, it'll just crack it. Um, so you can't have it oversized. Um, and so yeah, it basically just goes on and again what I was doing, so one hand is moving it towards me and the other hand is moving it away from me and in a backwards and forwards motion. The first thread is always the most important to make sure it cuts cleanly. So backwards and forwards until it runs up to the shoulder. So now I make a mark to line up with this here because it's a triple start. There are three different positions that the threads can cut in. Um, so theoretically it could be done, we could stop there now and that'd be enough. Um, but I want to make sure I get all three positions cut by all three different sections of the thread to get the cleanest. So let's clear away from the inside all of the material. More WD-40. And so we have to be a bit careful that you don't cross thread it. And you almost immediately go back to the original one. And then so if you do this and then you have it sort of, as you're pulling it off, but pushing in at the same time, it'll sort of click when it goes to the next sort of starting position. And that way you can see that it stops somewhere different. So mark it, so we just only got one more to go. Try and get the third spot. There we go, this third one. So you can sort of feel that it cuts a tiny bit more material each time, just to give nice clean cuts, and it'll cut a little bit that last thread a little bit further each time. Now what we'll do is turn it round and cut it the other way, cut it backwards. Again, this step isn't necessary, but it helps clean it out. 
So I actually do it without it on the thing. And I just go in like this. It's that last half turn that you need a bit of help with. So use a bit of cloth, grippy cloth. Backwards and forwards being gentle, make sure you don't break anything. Get right up to the shoulder. This way it cuts just that tiny bit extra further than it was if it was facing the other way. And you've got some nice clean threads. So we can use our cap from another pen to test it. And it should just twist on nicely. Again, when you turn it like that, you, you want to see it sort of sitting, not wavering and moving about. So that's why it's important to have a nice square uh, shoulder there. Come off. And that is the main prep work done. So you can see that we've uh, not really done anything here. We've drilled all the way in. We've got our external threads cut and our internal ones. So basically all we need to do now is put it back onto the thing in the mandrel and turn and shape it. That's the fun part. Okay, so now we need to turn the barrel. Uh, so now we need to use our mandrel. So we have a matching collet which will fit in there nicely like that. So this goes into our collet chuck. So it's sticking out a bit like that, tighten it up. give a quick spin to make sure the ends not wobbling it's nice and smooth there um, make sure you don't over tighten it just be, needs to be enough that it's tight not stupidly tight um, otherwise you will get it so tight that you won't get it undone trust me I've been there done that so this now just goes on here nicely like that so twist it on so using the threads to hold it in so just turn it on till it's tight but don't keep tightening it um, otherwise the metal of the um, mandrel threads will rip the plastic resin threads um, of this very easily if you over tighten it. So it just needs to be enough that it's sort of held there securely. Um, I like to use a little bit of masking tape to cover the external threads on the back barrel here just for protection just in case you accidentally tap it with your tool. Tape so I can find it later. And then always turn with your live center. So push that in there like that. Don't over tighten it again. Push in too hard, you can break things or bow it. So the important thing is when we're turning the shape um, is to remember that we have a approximately 78, 80 millimeter hole on the end of the threads. Um, so basically your size is completely up to you as long as it's longer than that. Um, I usually do around about 90 millimeters, so you have about 10 millimeters there to play with. Um, so my piece is uh, about 97 millimeters long, so you have a couple of millimeters waste for where the um, live center sticks in um, to turn away. And then a little bit of room to sort of for shaping and sanding and all that sort of stuff. And then we just turn to size. Uh, again, the size, the diameter is completely up to you and your preference. Um, you don't want to go narrower here than what the hole for your cap will be though, because that'll make threading the cap on where it stops difficult. So that's really about the only thing. And obviously you don't want to go any You've got the, um, it's about an 8.25 millimeter hole and nine millimeter here. So you obviously don't want to go any thinner than that. Uh, so usually I'm looking about 14 and a half and about 12 and a half, 12 in this end. Um, so I'll turn today with the extractor on, just makes it much easier for me. Um, I don't need to do too much talking. So speed, I have about two and a half thousand. And here we go.
turned a bit with stop and measure. So I'm going to measure the place at this point here. 15.4 and then roughly about where we've parted off, so it's at 12.6. So I like to have a bit of a taper down from these, but again, if you want to have it perfectly straight, it's up to you. Basically all that's left to do on this part is to sand and polish that. So I remove the tape at this point. So I'm not sanding the threads at all, basically just this portion and then the end. So I need to give a bit of um, attention to get this end all cleaned up. So it's obviously quite rough at the moment. I've got a fairly good finish here so I can get that all done. Yeah. So time for sanding. So I wet sand with um, the Arbonet. Um, I just, it's what I prefer. I find it lasts a bit longer, um, nicer to work with, a bit more expensive, but it's worthwhile. Um, so with Illuminite, I generally start at 400, anything coarser than that. You just put gigantic scratches in there, which are too hard to remove, um, but the 400 works quite well. I'll go through to a 1,000 with the Arbonet, which is as high as I can get it, and then I'll give it a quick go with some wet and dry, 2,500, 3,000, and 5,000 before I polish. So first thing you need to do, the blade running about 750, is uh, clean up this end. So you can obviously do whatever sort of shapes you like. I like to have a crisp 
sharp edge and then a slight curve, but that's purely my personal preference. It can be quite difficult to get a good curve off the tool, a good clean edge, so doing it with sandpaper is just the easiest and less risk with less risk free way to to do it rather than trying to do it with your work on the end while it's not being held with a live center. So we have a nice end, nice smooth surface there now. And so basically we'll just sand it until it's ready to be finished. Um, so it's not really a finishing video, so I assume most of you know how to do your own finishing process. So I won't go over that too much. Is the barrel all done? So all done there. So it gets a nice shine, nice shape. Um, I'll clean up the threads a bit with a brush and get all the material out there. But for all intents and purposes, this one is done. Okay, join me in the next video, and we'll do the nib section. Thank you.